It was quite the sight this week. Battleship Texas moved from its home of the past 74 years or so at the San Jacinto Battleground State site and was tugged through Galveston Bay toward dry dock in Galveston, where it will undergo an extensive $35 million repair. And then what? We're here this morning to talk about what's happened so far and what's ahead. Tom Perich, chairman of Battleship Texas Foundation, and Candace Trujillo, vice president of visitation and special events at Battleship Texas. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Cambrell. Thanks for having us. Oh, glad to have you here. Exciting week, wasn't it? Oh, was it ever. <laughs> Absolutely. We've what, been waiting for this for years. What kind of butterflies did you have when this was happening? Yeah, I'll say we were not nervous, but anxious. You know, you don't move a 110-year-old battleship every day, so... But they, the team worked super hard on it. You wouldn't believe the preparation that, that uh, they took over the last several months and even years. So they were ready for it. Candice, your thoughts? Oh, it was definitely a surreal experience. You know, you prepare for something for so long and then it finally happens. You know, it, it was just really great. And you were part of the visitation piece where you want visitors to come and you've been doing that uh, all along. So I, I, fans of this ship. Uh, what have you been hearing from them about how excited they have to see this happen? Oh, absolutely. I mean, our, all of our social media just absolutely blew up. The great, you know, stories you all have done so far. It, it's just been wonderful. They're just so excited to see the ship get, you know, the restorations we've all been wanting for so long. So, Tom, this has been a, a long time in the making. We've seen the leaks along the way. We need money to patch this. We need this. Talk about some of the biggest challenges that you, that you can think of along the way to get to this point. Over the years, the hull deteriorated to the point that it was leaking thousands and thousands of gallons or even tons of water every day you had to pump it off the ship. So we knew it needed to get fixed. But there were just perfect storm. COVID hit, which slowed everything down. The, there was no real dry dock for it. The Galveston folks had to go out and buy a new dry dock, mm -hmm. which then had to be towed here from the Bahamas. And uh, they used our contract to help get that all put together and everything and then of course we had the logistics of moving the ship we've been told for years you couldn't move the ship well proved them wrong on that one and that yeah. the marine our technical advisors and marine engineers did a fabulous job it's an amazing ship it's been through it's had an amazing life at this point 35 million dollars toward the uh, the the building of building it back if you will how has that money been raised? Is that all foundational kinds of things? Is that money donated? How is that money raised? Well, most of that money is what the state appropriated, and the biggest chunk of it goes to replace the hull, Got which it. is leaking. Uh, the Navy SEALs did training there, and one of them actually put their fists through the hull. It was so thin because of steel had eaten, the salt water had eaten steel. So most of it will go to replace the hull. And then we want to put a few bells and whistles yeah, on there. Yeah, absolutely. Don't we can holograms. And oh, yeah. Well, also, we want to redo the deck. Um, so the deck has seen you know better days. We want to replace the deck, repaint the whole ship. We also received a half a million dollar grant from the National Park Service, the Save America's Treasures grant, mm -hmm. to work on the superstructure. So all of the upper parts of the ship. And that actually has already been going on. We've done some uh, hazardous material removal right. so that once it got to the shipyard, they could get right on repairing and um, replacing the steel. Well, your background is the museums and that sort of thing as well. Yes. So, so the visitation piece is really critical to you. Visits haven't been happening recently because it hasn't been in shape. But Correct. the educational piece, that's an ongoing part. Talk about Absolutely. how you keep in contact with people okay. about the well, educational value. Yeah, we have outreach opportunities. We actually have a 20 millimeter Orlicon anti-aircraft gone on a trailer. And we take that all throughout the state. Um, we were at, you know, uh, Freedom Over Texas for the 4th of July. We had the gun trailer there. We've taken it to Boy Scout events all the way up to Fort Worth. We've taken it um, so kids can go on the tra you know, trailer and see that anti-aircraft gun. Um, we have, you know, the YouTube. Travis uh, does our YouTube and our social media. So we do try to reach out um, and spread the awareness about the ship. We, let's take a look at some of the process of this past week, the video. And, and we know that the ship is now in dry dock, which you said had to be brought in, which is unique to see that happening. Um, talk about what's taking place and what kind of repairs. I saw them already spraying, uh, pressure washing the side of the ship and going to the hull part, which is so unique because you don't really see that very often. No, you don't see a battleship out of uh, water that often. As you can see, they're working on the bottom of the hull 
the entire hull below the water line will be replaced or covered over. The, the steel is just deteriorated. That is the main job. And then, as Candace pointed out, there'll be work done on the deck. We hope to do work on the superstructure. Uh, but the main job is replacing the hull to stop the leaks. How long do we think these new repairs will last? Are we hoping that this is the last time we'll have to do that, or we want to keep this baby alive as long as we can, right? You know, they say with the new modern polymers and, and all the coatings that they can put on there, they tell us this thing could last 40 or 50 years, and that's what we're hoping. But good. we are planning on a sinking fund that we hope we can build up through visitation and operations and fundraising so that whatever needs to be done, we'll be able to do it. So when the ship gets back ship shape, so to speak, where do we think it's going to end up? Because it's not going back to San Jacinto. What are the options out there? No, the state said don't take it back to San Jacinto. Take it more tourist friendly place. That's the $64 question, Cameron. I mean, we're talking to various places. I don't think it's a secret. We're talking to Beaumont and Baytown and Galveston. And, you know, I think everybody wants it. Everybody's interested in it. The Galveston Daily News ran a poll and said, do you want the battleship in Galveston? It was 85 to 15, yes. But it's complicated. You know, you have to find a berth for it, negotiate, yes. you know, rental and all. So, but it'll be somewhere right here along the upper Texas. So we think it might be within the next couple of years we'll know? We'll, we'll probably oh, know. Oh, I, I think we'll know sooner than that. Yes. I mean, the repairs should be done in approximately a year, give or take. It could stretch a little if we raise some extra money and do some more work. But the repair should be done by next summer, and Can, I think we'll know. Candace, where do you want people to stay in touch with you about the foundation and everything that's going on with the uh, battleship? Yeah, well, please follow our social media pages. We have an Instagram, a Facebook group, um, our YouTube, um, and now a TikTok. So follow that. We'll share some things about what's been going on in the ship, as well as some educational, historical, uh, historic pictures, things like that. Battleshiptexas.com. Org. Uh, also our website, battleshiptexas.org. Right. And deal. we hope to have some what they call hard hat tours while it's in dry dock. But oh, right. That's still to be negotiated. Yes. Sign so, me up. Uh, we'll I'm get you as the number list. one man, Cambrell. <laughs> Tom Perich, Candace Trujillo, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a big day. Good luck. Smooth sailing ahead. Absolutely.